Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show. And in this episode, I wanted to talk about water temperature. I wanted to talk about water temperature for really big bass and ba just bass in general, just like what is the best water temperature to fish. Uh, and the reason I wanted to talk about this is it actually dictates a lot of what you'll be doing throughout the season. Then I'm gonna actually talk in a different video about something that completely breaks the rules here. And uh, for a general rule, water temperature is pretty important. Uh, it tends to dictate a lot of what I do throughout the summer. And it definitely dictates what the bass are doing and what the bait are doing. And uh, it's very, very important when you're trying to understand where bass will be throughout the year. Um, obviously, we just did a few videos on you know where I fish in the spring, and I'm gonna be putting out more videos about where I fish during different times of the season. This plays into that in a major, major way. And the reason for that being, um, the water temperature, when it gets too hot and too cold, is gonna dictate where those bass are gonna be uh, throughout the season. So, for instance, in the spring, bass are really looking for warm water, and where you're gonna find the most the most warm water is going to be in the rivers and estuaries and on the beaches. For the most part, that's where a lot of the bass will spend their time in the spring. And that's very easy, you know, you'll be able to easily understand that because if you think about it, you got these mud flats and the mud flats will warm up from the sun and in turn warm the water up. And that's why the water is so warm there. And it kind of goes the same thing on the beaches, the sand will warm up and when the tide comes in, the beaches will be warmer, or if there's estuaries dumping out onto beaches, the water that it dumps out onto the beaches will be warmer than uh, the deep ocean water. So during the heat of the summer, I'm talking late July, August uh, time frame, a lot of the bass that we get uh, are looking for cooler water temps. Uh, for the most part, around that time of the year, the water is going to be really, really warm. If you can find water that's in the high 60s, uh, mid to high 60s, that is money. So we always say 68 is the magic number. If the water is 68, there's a really good chance that you'll be able to find actively feeding bass. Where in a lot of different water temps, and also like the, the whole like thought process around that is, uh, 68 degree water is the perfect water temp for those bass to digest food, and it's also the perfect water temperature for them to grow. So I've even found, there's one scenario, one story I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit here that is that plays into it perfectly. Um, this was uh, 2019, summer of 2019. Um, there was uh, a lot of adult bunker around just offshore and this was probably late July by that time, maybe even early August, it was sometime around then. Uh, and the water was really, really, not really warm, but it was, it was definitely really warm. It was not really warm, but it's definitely really warm. It was warm water, uh, for in the, the season. I mean, the season was not that warm compared to like 2021, like this summer, the water temps were unbelievably hot, like in the mid seventies, but it was warm based on that year and what the water did that season. That's what I was trying to say. And so anyway, so the, the waters were warm, they, but where I picked a fish was on a deep drop off into this boulder field. And there's just, there's, I mean, house sized boulders where, the, where I was fishing. I mean, there's house sized boulders in the water and those bass stage up right on top of the boulders. There's a few of them and they're right by a point. And it actually has a little gap in between some of the boulders that has a lot of current that moves through it at, you know, during the moon tides. And uh, I actually do best not during the moon, the moon tides in that spot. The best time to fish it is in between those moon tides when the water's actually a little bit calmer. Uh, but we'll get to why that is in a, in a whole other episode. But the water temps were 68 degrees and those bass during the, it was probably 12 o'clock noon time, were all 45, 35, 45 pound bass. I mean, some of them were probably even bigger than that. Um, there were, there's probably, 30 or 40 of them and they're all up on the surface and they weren't feeding and they were just rolling around on the surface of the water. I actually have video of this somewhere, um, but I'm not, probably not gonna put it in this uh, in this video because it's really difficult to find. But I have video of this somewhere of these enormous bass rolling around 
on the surface of the water. They weren't feeding. They were just turning their body sideways. Their tails were coming out of the water and they were just rolling all over the place. And from, you know, from afar, you might think, okay, they gotta be feeding on something. But the more that I, you know, I threw every single plug I had in my bag, all the way down to little jumping minnows, bucktails, soft plastics, weightless sluggos. Like I had everything in my bag that day and I threw everything at them and they weren't touching anything. And uh, I was sitting there and I was watching these fish just rolling around and I was like, what is going on? And then it probably, it dawned on me, you know, there's huge bunker schools offshore. You can see, you know, the fleet of boats that are fishing them. And those bass that are feeding on them for the whole morning came into the on shore where they found some current and they found a place where the water temps were the perfect temperature for them to set up and just wallowed around and digested and, and grew. And these were just like some ridiculously big fish. Now, fast forward one day, I go into that spot with a giant spook and I catch four bass that are all 20, 25 pounds. And those are the same fish that were on that school, just slightly smaller bass, but still really, really nice solid size fish, all like 42, 43 inch fish. And uh, that was like really solid bass. Um, and I'll take that any day of the week, but nowhere near the same size as the ones that we were seeing rolling that day. And then to even further put into context that year, I had bass up to 50 inches in that spot on top water. So there were some really big bass in that spot. And uh, it's so funny because every year is different, same spot this year, not a single big bass I caught out of that spot, that same spot. There's not one big bass that was there. It just shows you every year is different. But the only reason that those bass were there at that specific time wallowing around was because they were digesting their food. And that's kind of my, my biggest guess there. It would make sense that that's what was going on. But that spot consistently produced literally day in and day out, there were big fish there at the same point in the tide every single day. And uh, it's very interesting because you can go to that spot now and we just didn't have the bunker around the same way we did the year before. And there's just not as many big fish. We also had a bunch of commercial guys in that area too this season. So it was the combination of both probably made it really difficult. Uh, I can only remember in that one specific spot, one bass that I, I hooked into this season. I actually have it on film. It's on my YouTube channel um, where I hooked this bass and it was, uh, you know, it was like mid 30 pound fish. I mean, it was solid, solid bass. And he, I hooked into him and it just pulled hooks. Sometimes that happens. But I digress on, on that story. What I really wanted to talk about, as I'm trying to say, is the water temperature in that spot was why those bass were held there during the late months of the summer when the water is the warmest. And that was why the bass were in that spot. So now if you really want to like play this differently and you got you think about this harder, the wind is really uh, affects the water temperature dramatically, literally from one day to the next. Uh, say that you have a north wind and it and you're in a north facing like the land is facing north the water will be 10 to 20 degrees warmer in that spot and I'm kid you not depending on how much it's blowing in that spot than it would be if you had a south wind blowing 10 to 15 offshore it is unbelievable that there's certain places with certain winds that the water can have a dramatic change like that and so those are the things you want to think about. So say the water is really warm in a spot and you're like, okay, uh, there's not, not a lot of action here. It's a shallow boulder field. So the water isn't very deep, but during a north wind, I know that the water is going to drop dramatically in, in temperature. So I actually just flipped it, but I guess we can say during a south wind, we know the winds that it's going to be blowing offshore and that south wind is going to cool the water down dramatically we know that's going to happen and the water is going to go from being 75 degrees like it was this summer. It was literally days where we had water temps that were 75 degrees, which is just mind boggling that how warm that is for Cape Ann. That like never happens. The water temps are 75 degrees, you know, and then the wind shifts and it's blowing south. And then all of a sudden it drops down into the 65, 67 degree water temps. I know for a fact that I'm going to be in there eeling the day, the next day, because I know that those bass are going to love that water temp and that big water like change, and they're going to be in there feeding. And, uh, that's something that I, that I, I really believe in and I follow to a T. Now, obviously the bass have to be there to be able to catch them, 
But if they are there, if the water temps cool down or warm up into their zone that they really like, that mid to high 60s, I really think that the best fishing is from 70 degrees to 65 degrees. If you can hit that window of temperature, you're really gonna be winning. And if you're in a boat, it's a lot easier. But when you're from shore, you can use uh, like NOAA apps and you can kind of gauge what the water temps are gonna be. If you know boat guys, you can ask them what the water temp is. Uh, but you'll get a rough gauge when you stand in the water. If it's cold it's or cool uh, during the summer, you're gonna know it's probably in the high 60s. And then if you step in the water and it feels like a bathtub, it's probably in the 70s. And you'll get a good you know, sense, sense for that, you know, the more you fish and the more you get the water temperature readings and uh, you can feel them yourself. And then you can literally mark down, and if you really wanna get technical with it, you can take a thermometer with you, like a normal digital thermometer, and you can put it in the water and that will give you a reading whether the water temperature is cooler or warmer. But you can drive yourself crazy with that because literally from one cove to the next can be five degrees difference of what, like the water temp can be five degree different uh, from one cove to the next just based on currents itself. So the wind plays a huge factor, currents play a huge factor, but as a rough rule of thumb, you have that five degree mark. And I would imagine that like from cove to cove, it's probably only gonna be like a five degree difference, not like 10 as I was trying to say, but like it, it's probably only gonna be a five degree difference from cove to cove. But as a rough guess, if it's in that mid 60 range, it's gonna be the money. And that goes for the beaches, that goes for the rocks, that goes for the estuaries. And that's why in the spring, you spend a lot of time in the estuaries and then you spend a lot of time during the summer, you'll spend them on the beaches and you'll spend them in the rocks. And uh, I, then late summer, I spend primarily all my time in the rocks into the fall. I'm spending a lot of time on the rocks um, and you can fish off the beaches too. Uh, and then late fall, sometimes I'll end up back in the estuaries, you know, eeling some of the estuaries late, late fall, hoping for that one last bass that, you know, will kind of come in and take a pit stop where that warmer water is to feed before their track further south, further south. Um, so that's why I, you know, think water temps are extremely important. I really, really utilize, you know, water temps as a big like arrow pointing me where I'm gonna fish during certain times of the year, wind direction and everything. And that's why, you know, we talk about tide, we talk about moon phase, we talk about wind direction a lot. And uh, the reason we talk about wind direction for me Number one, onshore wind blows a lot of bait in, in certain areas, and in certain areas you the current matters more, but for the rocks, onshore wind blows a lot of bait in, it also warms the water up, and that can be deadly. Even with an onshore wind in the middle of the summer, if the water's still warm, you get that onshore wind, you know, I'm still fishing it, but again, you're gonna be much more productive if you can find a cove that actually has a little cooler water temps. And again, it's gonna drive you crazy if you try to measure every single place you're going. And I'm not saying to do that, but if it's in between that 70 and 65 degrees, then you really know that it's gonna be solid uh, fishing during that time period, or it has the potential to be solid fishing. It's gonna be the most comfortable for fish. Now, I will do a video kind of following this up at some point where I kind of talk about all the things that break the rules. And uh, I one of the things that completely, that I followed this to a T, and then all of a sudden realize, wait, you know, there's a certain spot that I'm fishing and I'm getting a lot of really nice fish at that completely breaks this rule. And we'll get to that in another video. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video. I'm coming out with a ton more content. Um, I'm pretty much uploading daily at the moment. Uh, so I'm hoping to keep it going. I'm gonna start uploading more footage of me actually fishing. Um, I have a ton of file footage from both the Striped Bass Hunt Show. If you haven't seen that, please check that out. That's an awesome series we did. And as well as new unseen footage from this season of catching a lot of bass. Um, so there's a lot of great content to come. And so please subscribe, like this video if you did, and I'll see you next time.